Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shay Korb, and this is my coworker, Beth Fazio. We are here from Otterbein Early Education Center. I am a PBIS coach and facilitator at our center. This is my first year doing just PBIS, so the bulk of my day entails coaching teachers, pulling children for tier two small groups, um, making parent resources, facilitating curriculum, and things like that. But I have previously taught in both our preschool and our toddler classrooms. I currently work in the older toddler classroom, so I am a toddler teacher. I am also the PBIS facilitator of our buildings, and I also am a coach, um, even though I have not gotten out to do much coaching this year because our two-year-olds need me to be consistent in the room. Um, but I am one of the coaches, and I do have people come still and ask me questions, and I support the staff as much as I can. So we are here today to talk to you about how we teach social emotional curriculum in our toddler and preschool classrooms and what that looks like, feels like, sounds like, and where we've started and where we are now. So our objectives today, um, to help you choose a social emotional curriculum that's suitable for your center, we're going to explore both purchased curriculums and things that we have made on our own so that you see a range of things that you can do if you have money to buy things and what you can do if you don't. We're also going to help you determine what fits your center and how you can incorporate it with the curriculum that you're already doing. How can you fit this into your day when you already need to teach them um, literacy skills and math skills and all those other things that you need to fit into your day, as well as how we can expand that to our families. It aligns with the teapot and the tippy toes, which you might be familiar with as far as the ben benchmarks of quality. Not going to read that to you verbatim, but it is very important and key for achieving fidelity. So just a quick check. What's your status at your center? So I'll read all the choices, and then you can show me all at the same time. Um, so if you're a center that is just starting PBIS, and you don't really have a social emotional curriculum yet, you can show me that by putting your hands on your head. If your center has a purchased social emotional curriculum, put your hand on your nose. If your teachers only write their own social emotional curriculum, you haven't purchased anything, but you do come up with social emotional lessons on your own, you can do your hands on your shoulders. And if you're like us and you do a mixture of both, or you've bought something and you come up with your own stuff, you can show me that by one hand on your nose and one hand on your shoulders. So just a quick guess and check. Well, how, where, what's your status? So I'm seeing some shoulders. I'm seeing a lot of one hand on the nose, one hand on the shoulders, a, a good mixture of both. So hopefully we can give you some other strategies today that you can take back to your center. Just a brief little timeline of where Otterbein has come with their PBIS curriculum and where we've started. We began PBIS back in 2014, and at that time, we were doing some PADS lessons in our preschool classrooms. That was something we had already been doing. It was sort of spotty. Some teachers did it, some teachers didn't, and that's where we began. The following year, we decided that we needed something more to make sure that every student was getting social emotional curriculum, and we started writing our own lessons and coming up with our own things and pulling things from multiple resources off the internet or things from trainings that we had been to and created our own. And that is a binder that we had passed. If this was mainly in the preschool classrooms. There was a bag that traveled to the different classrooms. It had a lesson in it each week, some materials, and each preschool classroom, we have three, three preschool classrooms, would take turns with the bag, with the binder, and doing the lessons. So they would get a once a week lesson. And Beth will show that around. The following year, we continued using that same process, tweaked some of the lessons that we already had, and just tried to add a little bit more to it. In 2017, we purchased a curriculum for our preschool and for our toddler classrooms. Preschool use, began using Feelings Buddies, which I'll show you in more detail. Toddlers used the Baby Doll Circle Time. We also started doing something called PBIS Book of the Month. We added something called Zones of Regulation, and we began a big PBIS Kid of the Day um, activity with the kids. So we started adding more and more and more as we went. And finally, this school year, you can really see how much we've grown and how much we keep adding because as you all know with PBIS, you're never done. 
you just keep finding more ways to add to it and do more. So we're continuing with the Feelings Buddies this year. We do Baby Doll Circle Time, PBIS Kid of the Day, Book of the Month, and Zones of Regulation. We added a social skills focus where our teachers at the beginning of the year, we said, what kind of social skills do you think that these kids need to learn? And we created a big master list. We started using something called positive action, and we delved farther into the tier two um, aspect of the pyramid by doing small groups, and we also send home a monthly parent resource that is part of our curriculum. Each year, we give um, our preschool and our toddler a curriculum calendar. So it tells them what week, what their social skills focus is, a lesson, which this is mainly the feelings buddies and the um, baby doll circle time for the toddlers, and then what kind of monthly parent resource we are giving out that adds to that curriculum and creates a continuation between school and home. So this is only August through October, and this is online if you want to see it a little closer. And toddlers look similar. And again, there's has the baby doll circle time. But if you can read it, at the beginning of the year, we spend a lot of the time focusing on teaching and reteaching our expectations. And then we get further into our scripted curriculum and doing emotions and things like that. So every classroom receives one of those. So where to begin? The most important thing is teaching expectations, because that is what your program is built off of. So before we can delve into anything else, we had to start with that. The expectations at Otterbein are responsible, respectful, and safe, which probably sound very familiar in what most of your programs use as well. We do this at the beginning of the year with whole group lessons. Beth is holding up a pledge that our preschool classrooms say. They'll do the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning, and then they do this, and it goes, I am responsible, respectful, and safe. I think before I act. I keep my hands to myself. I use kind words, and I follow directions. A mantra that they have learned every day. We also use a lot of puppets, role plays, modeling, and making lists of examples and non-examples. There are some other visuals that we reference with the kids. These are hanging all over our center in various locations. These particular ones are for the bathroom. There's a toddler one and a preschool one. It says exactly how to be safe, responsible, and respectful in those areas. And then we give visuals so that the kids can read them too. It's also helpful for parents when parents come in so they know what the expectations are and they can quickly see that. So they're all over the building and we can constantly reference those. There are also books that we've created and they are for each age level. We just redid these this year. So each classroom has a safe book, a responsible book, and a respectful book. And they are filled with some of the most important ways to follow those expectations, as well as photos. So there is an infant version, there's a younger toddler version, an older toddler version, a preschool version, and a school age version. So it was quite an endeavor taking all those photos. But now that they've been created, we have them. So like I said, there's each color for each age level that we have. And the key to teaching those expectations is repetition and consistency throughout the day, both through formal lessons, like on our curriculum calendar, and just informally repeating constantly before you go out the door, every time you want to reinforce or reteach those expectations. So there is something that we do in our preschool classrooms called hands on top. This is another way that you can tell that the students are learning those expectations. But each time there's cleanup, the preschools do this. I can't wait. Let's your hands on top, everybody stop. Eyes on me, your hands are free. Clean up your own mess vlog. Ask somebody if they need help. If they say no, respect it. If the teacher says yes, you may help. We turn your picture. You're you gonna get five. Walking feet, inside voices, put the toys in the bin nicely, go. Good job, Elizabeth, thank you. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but it's amazing how much they have learned with that consistency and repetition. In our three-year-old classroom, the teachers do it, and um, in the four- and five-year-old classroom, the kids get to do it. 
We also do something called PBIS Kit of the Day. This is a job that has to be taught. You have to model and teach the kids how to do it, and it's a gradual release of control. But about two months into the school year, or later if needed, the kids get, this is a job every day. So they get to wear a hat, they can wear a shirt. Some of the classrooms have wings or little dollar store skirts that they bring out around Halloween time, and they get to carry this bag. And when they see their peers being responsible, respectful, or safe, they can help give them a B. And you know they're in the process of writing and learning how to write their own name, let alone their peers' names, but they can write their own name on it so they know where it came from. They can get a peer's name tag and write their peer's name on it. They can ask a teacher for help. Or if they don't feel comfortable doing that, they can give things like stickers or stamps to let their peers know that, I see you, I know what you're doing, and I think you're doing an awesome job. Some of the classrooms, as a way to facilitate this with the children, they will give them something specific to look for, like, hey, let's pick a secret expectation. What do you want to pick at circle time? And the kids might say, I want to look for somebody sitting crisscross mountain peaks or mermaids, which is our three different ways that you can sit. And then that's specifically what they'll look for. They can do it with different things like walking in the hall or being quiet. There are also these solution cards in there, so they can sort of act like a peer mediator and help their friends as they're resolving conflicts. And again, something you have to teach and gradually model for them. But we do the PBIS kit of the day to incorporate into our curriculum. So that's teaching the expectations. Now we're going to move into some of the purchased curriculums that we have. We are not paid by these companies. We're just here to tell you what we do and what we found that we like and what works. And there might be some aspects that even if you can't purchase them for your center, that you can, um, you can look them up online. They're from Conscious Discipline, which I do have a handout that I will give you with these, with these websites and books on them then. But you can research them and see if there are any aspects of them that you could make and do even without actually buying their curriculum. So. Feeling Buddies is what we do with our preschoolers. It is it was created by Dr. Becky Bailey, and if you want some awesome things to watch, you can YouTube her. She has a lot of great parenting tips, teaching tips, and how to teach kids about self-regulation. So that's what, the, that's what the curriculum is about, helping kids to recognize their emotions, how to get their emotions under control, and how to self-regulate. I don't know about you, but even as an adult, I have trouble self-regulating, and I think if I had learned some more skills when I was four years old, it might have been a little easier growing up. So this is what they look like. And they are in four pairs. They are the cousins. So like frustrated is a, is, I don't want to say a calmer form, but a, a less agitated form of angry. So they go together. Anxious and scared go together. Disappointed and sad and calm and happy go together. And when the children are upset, they can get the buddy that they are feeling like and they can take it to the safe zone in our classrooms. And they have a little smock that they can wear, which Miss Beth is going to model for us. So if they're feeling angry, they can get the angry feelings buddy and they can put on the smock and they can sit in the safe zone and then they can choose a strategy. There is a board that is there. They can, there's a mirror on one side so they can look at how their face is feeling and what their face is doing and they can choose how they feel, so they feel angry. And then they're going to pick a calm down strategy. So there's different things that we teach them. The main ones that we use are pretzel, drain, I'm not sure what order they're in on there, pretzel, drain, balloon, and star. I'm gonna show you some of those, and Miss Beth is gonna try and calm her angry feelings buddies down with some of these self-regulation techniques. So you can do them from your seat, or you can stand up and do them. But the first one we're going to try is pretzel. So pretzel, you give yourself a great big hug. And you breathe in. And you do that multiple times to calm yourself down. The next one we're going to try is the drain. So you're going to stick both your fists out like this. And squeeze them really tight while you take a big breath in. And then let it out and make a faucet sound as you're releasing that tension. So that's the drain. Balloon. You have to put both hands over your head. I only have one. Both hands over your head. and I'm sorry, put them on your head. And then as we take a big breath in, you're going to inflate a giant balloon over your head like this. And then you're going to let it out and deflate and make your best deflating balloon sound. So that is the balloon. And the last one, if you want to try it, it's better standing up. But you can do it from your seat if you want. And you're just making yourself into a star. 
and you're stopping, taking a deep breath and relaxing and doing that multiple times. So the whole idea behind feelings buddies is talking to your buddy, making your buddy feel safe because it's, we want to teach kids that it's okay to have emotions, but the idea is to get yourself back to feeling calm. So when the children have done those activities and they feel like they are calm, and of course the teacher can go back and help them with that and, um, and get them back to that green, calm, or happy feeling, then they can come out and they're ready to rejoin the group. And Beth has some of the other books that come with the curriculum. The blue one is Helping My Feelings Buddies. So there's one for each of the emotions in there and how you can make your buddy feel safe. And that's something that we teach the kids and read to the kids. And the other ones, there's a character called Schubert who goes through the curriculum and teaches different social skills and strategies, like how to use his big voice when he's standing up to a bully. Without using, your without using your hands, how can you use your words in a big, strong voice to take control of the situation? And something that's really cool about that is there are also board books for younger preschoolers or older toddlers that go along with that. So Sophie is Schubert's little sister. So in the little books, Schubert helps his little sister to learn those skills too. And there's a whole series of those. So those are from Conscious Discipline created by Dr. Becky Bailey, and we found that we, we really like it. And I believe I have a video for that, too. Oh, something else that goes along with that is creating a safe zone, which you might have in your classroom as a calm down area or peace corner. Um, and all of these different the steps for calming down, the feelings buddies are housed there, as well as a calm down bin, the posters for the things that we went over, the different calm down strategies. And a lot of teachers add their own. Some of our classrooms have things like rocket breathing and um, dragon breathing, different things that they've pulled from online or they've learned from different trainings. I do have a handout that you can grab on your way out that just explains some of the different things that you could put in a safe zone or a calm down area. So I'm not going to read those now, but I do have those if you or someone from your center wants to grab those on your way out. It's also a resource that we sent home to families for how they could create that at home. Again, creating that continuation between school and home. I have a video for you of one of our teachers teaching a feelings buddies lesson about um, signals and body language. So it's a few minutes. We'll watch that. How you're feeling? There are body signals and there are voice signals. So if I am feeling happy, my face signal would be smiling. My body signal might be that my body's nice and relaxed. And my voice signal is that I'm talking like I'm talking now. It's very upbeat, it's very smiley. It's a happy sounding voice. Now, if I am sad, what's my face signal if I'm sad? Um, I'm sad. What does a sad face look like when you're sad? Face? Oh, and I can see Julian. Julian's doing some very good body signals for sad. Julian's shoulders are slumped. Julian's hands are in front of his face. Those are good body signals for sad. I'm sad. This might be my body signal. I just need to. Okay. My voice can get quieter. If I'm crying, my voice might do this, where it gets breathy. Yes. If you heard someone having that voice signal, it would be a good idea to get them a feelings buddy. That would be very kind. Why the angry? If I'm angry, what's my face signal? <laughs> You're gonna see my teeth, and my eyebrows are gonna go like this. Mm, what might my body signal be? I don't know. Happy. You, you, Cash, you say you don't know, but I see yeah. your fists are clenched and your shoulders are ten clenched and your whole body looks like it's stiff. So you're doing some great body signals for angry. <laughs> and if I'm angry, my voice might be <laughs> 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 Let's 
Sometimes I'll take a breath to calm down from our BA, showing what angry signals look like. Ready? Let's balloon. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That's going to lead us into what we do with our toddlers. Our younger toddlers and our older toddlers both use something called baby doll circle time, which was also created by Dr. Becky Bailey from Conscious Discipline. And the whole basis of that curriculum is relationship building with attachment and helping children to feel secure. There is something called I love you rituals that it focuses on, which are things like Humpty Dumpty, row, row, row your boat, um, teddy bear, things like that. It's, it's little games that the children learn how to play with their baby doll that in turn the teacher plays with those children at other times of the day, focusing on building love and attachment and a secure relationship and a secure bond. There are also components of the curriculum that teach them about emotions and some of the breathing techniques that we already talked about. So the two curriculums really flow well together and provide a good continuation for the kids. So. We are going to have you get your baby, which if you happen to have a baby doll, you can participate with us, or you can just pretend that you have one. So you are all turning into two-year-olds right now, and Miss Beth is going to show you what she does with her kids. Your baby would actually be in a, um, we actually keep our babies in a laundry basket. So imagine that your baby is in a laundry basket, and I'm going to start by doing what I would do with my two-year-olds. So... Get your baby, get your baby, get your baby, time to play. Get your baby, get your baby, get your baby, time to play. The whole time I'm pointing at the basket and asking the kids to go get their baby dolls. The basket comes out, the kids are already starting to get them at this point in the year. Because they know as soon as babies come into the room, we're playing babies. Um, then we start and have them sit down on the carpet with me and they start doing the things that we do. My baby's laying down. Can you lay your baby down? My baby's laying down. This is my baby. My baby's laying down. My baby sucks on her fingers. Can you bring your fingers up to the baby's mouth? My baby sucks on her fingers. This is my baby, my baby sucks on her fingers. Oh, this one's tricky. My baby sucks on her toes. Can you put your baby's toes up? My baby sucks on her toes. This is my baby, my baby sucks on her toes. My baby's ready to play, yeah. My baby's ready to play. This is my baby, my baby's ready to play. And then we introduce the, the um, I love you rituals. These are actually the rituals that I use, at, or the visuals that I use in my own um, room. So I went online and I found these pictures on Google. They are not from um, the conscientious discipline, but they did give the suggestion of making visuals. So these are just Googled images, but you could get your own. If you had a special teddy bear in the classroom that you wanted to take a picture of, you could do it using your own teddy bear, but these were just Googled. So we are going to do the teddy bear. So I want you to lay your baby back down on your lap. Ready? And you're going to take your finger and you're gonna draw a little tiny circle and we're gonna go round and round the garden goes the teddy bear. Now take your fingers and walk up, ready? One step, two step, tickle under there. And you tickle underneath the baby's chin. And now the kids are going to be like, okay. And so you do it again. Round and round the garden goes the teddy bear. One step, two step, tickle under there. I go on the play yard and my kids come up to me and I go round and round the garden goes the teddy bear. One step, two step, tickle.
tickle under there and I tickle their chin, just like I do with my baby dolls. That's where the teacher extending it beyond baby dolls comes the attachment part of that. So after we've played every time, we need to calm our babies back down because um, when we end our baby doll circle time, we need to say goodnight to them. So my baby's game's all done. All done. My baby's game's all done. All done. This is my baby. My baby's game's all done. My baby's going bye bye. Bye bye, baby. My baby's going bye bye. Bye bye. Breathe in. Breathe out. My baby's going bye bye. And at this point of this, um, the lesson, I would have my basket out and we would sing, bye bye babies, bye bye babies, bye bye babies, we'll play again someday. And I use that tune a lot in my classroom because when it's cleanup time and the kids are having to put away toys, we say bye bye to them. We say, Bye bye blocks, bye bye food, bye bye cars, we'll play again later. And I also use it with the expectations going down the stairs. One hand on the railing, one friend on each step, one um, Going down the pink side so we can be safe. Because on our stairwells, yes, our two-year-olds go up and down stairs. Um, going down the stairs is pink arrows and going up the stairs are blue arrows. And so we sing which side we're going up and down. So the kids hear that tune all day long and they respond to it. Thank you. So that's for our toddlers. And one more purchase curriculum that we're going to talk about is positive action. This is something that we just started this year. Our school district that we are part of, um, they purchased a curriculum for us called Positive Action. Positive Action is a series that goes pre-K to 12, and the school district had mandated it for all of their grades. So they gave us the pre-K version. So this is something that I go into our older preschoolers, our fours and fives, and they hear this little song when I'm coming. Let's see if it'll play for us. <laughs> goes along with it. Let me just get back to the slide because when I played the song it left me. So that goes every time I come in and there are puppets that go with it. It's coming. But the puppets are called Squeaky Meanie and the basis of this is that, oh come on, I'll keep talking. The basis is that they are learning how to make positive choices so that their thoughts, their feelings, and their actions are all connected so that, I'm not sure what's happening here. Let's do this. So that way when they make the positive thoughts, feelings, and actions, they can be in the happy circle. And then if they make thoughts, feelings, and actions that are not so positive, they end up in the happy circle. So we talk about different ways to keep ourselves in the happy circle and Squeaky Mimi teach these lessons. 
So that is something that we added this year. And it's about building their self-concept and making them feel good about themselves because they do these positive choices. How I feel about myself, that is my self-concept. So the next thing that we're going to talk about that brings us to the end of our purchase curriculums, these are the other ways that we teach emotions in our classrooms. So we'll talk about some different visuals, some different resources that you could pull from as well. The zones of regulation. This is, this is an actual curriculum in and of itself. We don't do the whole curriculum, but this is the book that it comes from, and there's lots of things on the internet about this too. But the idea is that the, the zones are your different emotions, and they're categorized into these four different colors. And each color looks like a traffic signal. So green means go, ready to learn. That's where ultimately you want to be. The blue is a safe rest area, or not, I'm sorry, a slow rest area. The yellow is a, also a slow, but it might be something like, like, a, like a construction sign or something like that, and stop, a stop sign. Those sorts of feelings, when you're experiencing feelings in these different categories, you want to try one of those calm down strategies to get back to green so that you can be calm, happy, proud, ready to learn, ready to go, ready for your day. So we do a lot of things to help the children recognize their emotions and label their emotions. We have real photos on there. A lot of them are pulled from the internet, but they you could also take your own photos. We also have the pictures of our feelings buddies on there, which if you noticed when we held up the feelings buddies, the colors are behind them as well. That way the kids can continually see, okay, I'm feeling angry. That means I'm red. That means I need to stop. I need to take a break. I need to figure out how to get myself back to green. Or wow, I'm, I'm really uh, blue sad. I'm feeling kind of slow. I need to figure out how to get myself back to green. So when we're teaching them to label their emotions, we're also teaching them the color so that they can go along and, and learn how to, how to use those different strategies. Each classroom has one of these boards, and the older they get, the more that they learn to do it. So our, our older toddlers and our preschoolers are learning to move their own picture. They do a little check-in when they come in in the morning. How are you feeling today? They can move their picture throughout the day as their feeling changes. Or if they're not near a poster when their feelings are changing, that's when our teachers are referring, wow, I see you're really blue sad that your friend pushed you. I see that you're feel, really feeling red hands on because you pushed your friend. What can we do to get back to green happy, green calm? How can we solve this problem? How can we feel better? So we do a lot of intentional teaching with that. Even our younger toddlers are learning this right now also. So some of the lessons that our teachers do to incorporate zones of regulation, and here's how you can fit it into your normal day. This is an activity that one of our preschool teachers did in her art center. She was teaching about music that week. That was her theme, but she incorporated zones of regulation. So at her art center each day, she played a different kind of music. She played happy music. She played sad music. She played really excited music. And she also played very angry or scared music. And then she had the kids paint while they listened to that different music. And then she categorized it into those different emotions on her bulletin board. There is a song that I'm going to play for you that our younger toddlers do. do. They do a little check-in every morning. If you're happy and but you know it's a the little girl behind you. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're sad and you know it, say boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. She points to it. If you're sad and you know it, say boo-hoo. If you're sad and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're sad and you know it, say boo-hoo, boo-hoo. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're angry and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're angry and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're excited and you know it, shout yippee! Yippee! If you're excited and you know it, shout yippee! Yippee! If you're excited and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're excited and you know it, shout yippee! 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 Traxton, I see you looking at our chart. How are you feeling today? Mm, happy. Are you happy? Uh, 
angry. Yes, it's happy, sad, excited, and angry. Which one is Jackson? Angry. Are you angry? Oh, yeah. Can I see your angry face? You make an angry face? Yeah. That looks like a happy face. I see a big smile. So they do a lot of focusing on emotions, too. And they are just learning now to, to move their little emotions face. Good. So this is a game from one of our uh, older Sophie, preschool can you classrooms. Spin the spinner? Keep you your thumbs handle. on there. <sighs> Sophie's spinning. I, I don't want to be out. out. Be careful. What'd you get? Green. You got a green feeling. So put your thumb. You guys are all getting thumb. Put your thumb on the green, Sophie. Okay. And what is a green feeling? What's a green feeling? <laughs> Sophie. Uh, Happy. Happy is a green feeling. Um, All right. I'm gonna have to lay down for this. I can't move my bum without laying down. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, can you get the? I don't care. You can lay down. We got three more friends to get their fingers on there. This is better. Wait, keep it on there. Keep it on. Oh, you lose. All right, you got red. Let me see. What? Which one? Okay, it is um, your middle finger. So the middle, the finger in the middle is going to go on red. They don't know what that is. And you are going to name a situation that made you feel red. Um, so something that happened that made you feel red. Somebody take my toy. You got somebody took your toy and you were angry. All right, Trevor. I can't. So again, a lot of different things that our teachers, they pull off the internet because they know that we need to teach these things and they know that we have the zones and they find different ways to do it. You could do this with a real twister because you know that real twister has those colors and you could do your gross motor center with a real twister game, having them identify different situations and different feelings that would fall into those categories. We have a bunch of different materials that we're going to show you really quickly different things that you can either buy or make or find off the internet. One of the things that we have in our classroom are emotions mirrors, where you can, they can look in the mirror and the other side shows them how they're feeling. You could have a mirror in your classroom already, which I'm sure a lot of you do in your dramatic play, and you could post pictures and the color maybe that it would be if it's a red angry picture right there. So you wouldn't have to buy those, but you could. Yes, Beth has the, the feelings chart. She, we took the little pictures, just the little ones, and we printed them off, and we put them on one of those little binder rings, and we hung them right next to her mirror in her dramatic play area so the kids can flip through there while they're identifying their emotion. So one way that we've bought it, and we've made it. Another thing that we have are the, maybe I didn't grab the stones, that's okay. There are little emotion stones that have pictures. There are also emotions eggs there that they have some of the faces already drawn on them. They were great around Easter time that the kids can mix and match and how do the eyes look when they're, when they're angry? How do the mouths look when they're sad? And they could mix and match and make silly faces and talk about the emotions. So getting your fine motor practice as well as your emotional identification. We have feelings blocks where they can build faces. They come with eyes, nose, mouth, and again, the kids can mix and match and talk about how the blocks are feeling. So you could, you could buy something like that, or you could take pictures, either Google them or take your own photos of uh, angry eyes or sad eyes or a happy smile, and you could just package tape them to your wooden blocks. So you could make them or buy them. We also have a, a number of different feelings bingos up here. There are ones that you can purchase. There are ones you can pull off the internet. Or again, you can make your own. We, there is a zones matching game that I do not have out. I had it out at our other session. Beth had made it for a literacy night, but you could take or draw little pictures that had different emotions on them, and then you can match them to the different zones the red, yellow, green, blue on an emotions chart. We already talked about Twister. You could play emotion charades. Can you read one of them, Beth? Uh, hitting a baseball through a neighbor's window. Saying goodbye to somebody you miss. 
And then the kids would make their face, body, voice signal match how those different situations would make them feel. Lots of puppets. Puppets are awesome. Where's that guy? I'm telling you, I feel like I'm missing a bag here. I don't know. <laughs> but we have little puppets at school where the mouths and the eyes can change. You could make those, too. We also use puppets for different things. Like I showed you Squeak and Maybe for positive action. We have the Feelings Buddies. This is, he's from Paths, but we don't use him for Paths anymore. But we do teach other social skills with him. Like this is a social story that was on Cephal, which is now changed to challengingbehavior.org. But it's a social story about Tucker Turtle and, and another calm down strategy. So you could use puppets for that. You could really teach a puppet to teach any social skill that you wanted to. You could reenact a situation from your classroom. You saw Susie and Billy fighting over the blocks, and you could reenact that with your puppets at circle time about different ways to, call, to solve that problem. There are lots of different CDs that you can purchase, and I'll just leave those up here if you want to see them afterwards. There's different ones. Hey, there they are. There's the, there's the puppets or the dolls that we have that their faces can change. You could even make stick puppets like that, where you have different faces on popsicle sticks. Or you could make a sock puppet and use your own string or pipe cleaner or whatever. But they are really cool because you can change the eyebrows and the mouth. So that way, if you're telling a social story, you can make their faces match. Because you know the kids are going to realize if your doll is making a happy face, and you're trying to teach them a story about how to calm down when they're angry. This is, he's also from Paths, but I renamed him. His name is now Mr. Waggles. And he went in and taught Beth's class how to smell the flower and blow out the candle as a calm down strategy. And there are also lots and lots and lots and lots of books, which we have some of those up here that you can explore later. But something that we're finding, the more that we're reading books with kids, it doesn't just have to be one that is titled a certain emotion or a certain social emotional skill. You can really teach social emotional or emotions with just about any book that you're reading. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to share with you, or one of the last things, are different ways that our teachers are teaching those weekly social skills. We'll talk about when to teach them. So circle time, center time, in the moment. Bible Story in Chapel, we are a church-based center, so we do weekly Bible story with the kids. Our assistant director comes and tells a story, and our pastor and youth pastor teach chapel every week, so the things on our curriculum calendar also correlate with the lessons that they're teaching, and they draw in Bible stories that teach those social skills. So we do have that connection, and that might be something that works for you and your center also, and different ways that we can teach them at home. When to teach or how to teach through modeling, social stories and scripts, with books, games, music, visuals, and more. These are posters that we made this year about how to adjust the volume of your voice according to where you are. So we have the green off voice, we have the whisper voice, the talking voice, and the loud yelling voice. And we have these hanging in different locations. And at our center, there will be Velcro and little arrows that you can move according to how you wanted the kids to have their voice adjust. One of the activities that one of our preschool teachers came up with for teaching this that also went along with her curriculum, she was teaching the kids how to write their name. So she decided to have them write their name in small, medium, and large, and then ask them to read them in a whisper voice, a talking voice, and a loud yelling voice so that the kids were, were getting both of those aspects of the curriculum. Another social skill that we teach is saying sorry and having empathy for each other. There are things that we have hanging all around the building called Sorry Sundays, and we teach the kids how to make apologies. And the younger they are, the less the scoops and the less toppings the Sundays have, but the older that they get, they build. So it starts with, I'm sorry, how can I make you feel better? And then the more that they, they learn, it's, I'm sorry, that was wrong because, how can I make you feel better? I know that made you feel, or I won't do that again, and just different steps. So we have those things hanging around the building. And like I said, it builds with each age level. And 
we are in the process of making sorry solution cards. So the kids want a way to help their, their peers feel better when they've done something wrong. They can choose, how can I make you feel better? Would you like a hug? Can I give you space? Would you like help rebuilding that block tower that I knocked down? So we use those. This was another activity that a preschool classroom did. They taught the saying sorry strategies in a, in a um, predefined situation. So that way when this did happen for real, the kids already knew how to handle it. So she partnered them up and one partner built a tower and they had a timer and the other partner was off doing something else. And when the timer came off, the second partner got to come over and knock those blocks down and then they practiced saying sorry with the different Sorry Sunday steps. And they talked about how that made the other person feel and things like that. So they practiced those in that predefined situation. So that way they were already prepared. I only have about 10 minutes. I'm gonna try and get through these. Problem solving, these are the problem solving strategies that are also housed on challengingbehavior.org. They're called the solution kit cue cards. We use these in all of our classrooms. Some of them have them on rings and some of them have them hanging on the wall. One of the ways that Beth used this in her older toddler classroom, they used the strategy of working together. Each child got a different color paint and then they work together to make these art projects. So it teaches them how to play together again in a controlled situation. That way they can, they can learn it before they actually have to use it. Here's our infant classroom. You can each and even teach social skills to infants. So teaching them how to wait. They build with blocks and then they count either five or 10, depending on how much, how long the child can wait building them up. And then they encourage them to, to wait before they knock them down. And they also encourage the children to ask for a turn or model how to ask for, ask for a turn when the other child is done. Personal space is a big one at every age level. This is a really great book that's by Julia Cook. It's called Personal Space Camp. She write, has written a whole bunch of books. If you go on Amazon and look for her, we purchased a whole bunch of those. But this one is about um, teaching personal space. And we have these posters called, Are You Staying in Your Personal Spaceship? And we teach the kids they can walk down the hallway with their hands on their hips. Or we define it as my personal space, reach high, reach low, put your hands on your hips. So your personal space is your body and the area right around your body. So we're walking in the hall, it's okay, get in your spaceships. And they walk down the hall like that, or they find their circle spot like that. We also use hula hoops as a great visual of where your personal space is. We also talk about how it's staying in your own bubble. This was a lesson that I did with the older toddlers. They each got a puzzle piece, we defined our personal space, as their puzzle piece and said, okay, you can only pop your bubbles. You can't pop anybody else's bubbles. So I'm going to blow these bubbles and these are Alice's bubbles, but nobody else can pop Alice's bubble. And they had to stay on their puzzle piece and I was really, really proud of how well they did only popping their own bubble. And we reiterated that because if you stay in your own personal space, you can't pop anybody else's bubble. And last but not least, how do we involve families in our curriculum? One of the things that we do is every month, our preschool rooms share books, our toddler rooms share books, and we recently started it with our infants. They get to take home a book, and the teachers take turns creating an instruction sheet and sending home some visuals or some other activities. They get two nights with the book, and it teaches just different social skills, like. How, what kind of emotions are the characters feeling? How could we solve the problem in the story? How can we wait and take turns? How can we stay in our personal space? And then when the books come back and everybody in the classroom has had a chance to do it, there's some kind of culminating activity that the classrooms do. For example, one of the toddler classrooms did a book about going to bed and talked about bedtime routines. And then they got to create a little tissue box bed for a favorite stuffed animal. When all the class had had a turn, they had a PJ day and brought their little, little beds and their favorite stuffed animals. And they talked about bedtime routines at home. So lots of different ways that you can incorporate that. And again, just about any book, you can find something PBIS related. We also send home a monthly parent resource. 
as I showed you briefly on the very first slides, that whatever our classrooms are teaching as their social skill or with their feelings buddies or baby doll circle time curriculum, we create some sort of resource. So for example, at the beginning of the year when we were just starting feelings buddies, we sent home paper copies of the feelings buddies so that way they could have them at home. We also sent home ways to make a safe zone, which I think I mentioned that I do have examples up here of how it's the same kind of resource that we sent home to our parents. We've sent that home. There's um, a part in the curriculum that talks about what bugs me and how to communicate that to people. So we sent home just blank paper and a title page that the families could work together to say, it really bugs me when you don't pick up your shoes. <laughs> and they could talk with their parents and their children about that. We've also sent home copies of the posters of our different calm down strategies, which were the pretzel, the balloon, the star, and the drain. There are also things that we send home from our toddlers. So Beth and I work together. I create the preschool resources, and Beth creates the toddler resources. We've sent home pictures of those I love you rituals that Beth talked about and modeled for you. We've sent home sample songs from the baby doll curriculum. We've also sent to home calm down strategies for them as well. We send home um, the backpack series every other month, which you might be familiar with, which is from Taxi, which is now housed on that challengingbehavior.org. And we also send home um, parent bi-monthly monthly newsletters that talk about PBIS and what we're doing with our curriculum. So in conclusion, no matter if you make it or you buy it, combine it if you can, <laughs> figure out a variety of different learning styles. It can be pre-planned and in the moment. The key is consistency and repetition and finding those common strategies and solutions so that way your kids can grow up with PBIS and the curriculum and take it home from them too to create that continuation for each other. If you have questions as you're taking some of these strategies back or you're like, hey, I really like that resource, but I, I didn't get to see it before I left. Can you email me a copy? We'd be more than happy to provide you with any answers or any resources. That is our email where you can reach both of us. We'll be up here if you want to take a look at any of these resources. And I also have those handouts with the different ways to make different calm down strategies in your safe zone in your classroom. And I also have a handout that talks about how can you do this. We did a little practice presentation at a different center. And they said, well, where do you find all this stuff? How do you come up with all this stuff? So I made a little cheat sheet. It talks about the different titles of the, of the purchase curriculums and the websites that go along with them. Also, where do we find little videos and songs? It's, it's as simple as Daniel Tiger and Sesame Street and different things that you can find on YouTube. And then also a few things about different resources and teaching ideas and where you can find those things. It's, it's, it's real stuff. It's not necessarily scholarly resources, but it's stuff of how do you, how do you build upon those evidence-based practices. So does anybody have any questions before we get the code? If not, we'll be up here to, to answer your questions or get strategies or take pictures, whatever you need.